I just want to play a couple of things here and see if I have this right. Can we start, please, with cut number one from the Surgeon General yesterday? Listen to this. Today, we live in a world where misinformation poses an imminent and insidious threat to our nation's health. Yes, it does. Health misinformation is false, false. inaccurate, or misleading information mm. about health, according to the best evidence at the time. Right. And while it often appears innocuous on social media apps, on retail sites, or search engines, the truth is that misinformation takes away our freedom to make informed decisions about our health and the health of our loved ones. Right. Thanks. During the COVID-19 pandemic, health misinformation has led people to resist wearing masks in high-risk settings. It's led them to turn down proven treatments and to choose not to get vaccinated. This has led to avoidable illnesses and death. Mm. Simply put, health information has cost us lives. Oh, my gosh. So now information can cost us lives. Now it's misinformation. Okay, so when when they were saying you got to wear 25 masks and stay inside, if you said that doesn't make any sense at all, that was misinformation. You are dangerous. Oh, no. Oh, no, I'm dangerous now. Ooh. I well, it turns out uh, we were right. Uh, wearing the little surgical mask. Really didn't do anything. Staying inside really didn't do anything. In fact, some people now say it might have made things worse. <gasps> what a surprise. So our kids, kids can't go back to school. They cannot go back to school. No, it's not happening with kids. It doesn't seem to be a problem with kids. And as soon as the teachers get vaccinated, you know, why don't we just protect the old people? How dare you? That's misinformation. You're going to get people killed. Well, we have officially gone from debate to now public policy by the government to squash all those who dissent. It's costing us lives. Okay, but I mean, really, they're probably just talking about it and saying, hey, don't spread misinformation. Let's go to the White House. Cut two, please. Uh, with these social media platforms uh, and those uh, engagements typically happen through members of our senior staff but also members of our COVID-19 team uh, given as Dr. Mur Mur Murthy uh, conveyed uh, this is a big issue of misinformation specifically on the pandemic in terms of actions Alex that uh, we have taken or we're working to take I should say from the federal government uh, we've increased uh, disinformation research and tracking uh, within the Surgeon General's office we're flagging problematic posts for Facebook Facebook uh, that spread disinformation. We're wow. working with doctors and medical professionals to connect uh, to connected medical experts with popular mm. with popular who are popular with their audiences with uh, with accurate information and boost trusted content. So we're helping get trusted content out there. Wow! So they've got doctors. They've got doctors who are trusted. You know, people who like run children's hospitals. You know who are really, really trusted. You know, I mean, you're not going to trust your, you're not going to trust your children to, you know, some crazy doctor, you know, Dr. Mangala. Oh, wait, he did run a children's hospital. In fact, he ran the biggest children's hospital in Germany. That's weird. He was a trusted voice. But that was then. This is now. Nothing like that could ever, ever, ever happen. Don't worry about it. So they're now, if I got this right, working with Facebook to tell them who they should censor. They're working with Facebook, flagging things for Facebook and saying, you know, this person's really a problem. I don't think there's a problem with this at all. There it goes again. <laughs> the First Amendment just went speeding by. I, Stu, am I wrong here on the First Amendment? I mean, that is now they're colluding with social media. And they're telling us that you better believe their experts, by the way, completely unrelated. Have you seen the people in Cuba that are now protesting in the streets because the government is so draconian? Now they're going out in the streets and they're speaking their mind, but they're being beaten up in the streets because they're very dangerous. I love that. They, the, what, was, what did the White House call it? Their right to peacefully protest? 
Yeah. It's like, well, I believe they have that right, and I believe they got that right from God. But you know who doesn't recognize that right? The Cuban government. Yes, uh, yes. And apparently, more and more every day, this government. How dare you? They are now America. Wake up. Wake up. So the the quote from the Surgeon General, limiting the spread of health misinformation is a moral and civic imperative that will require a whole lot of societal effort. Misinformation has caused confusion, led people to decline COVID-19 vaccines, reject public health measures such as masking and physical distancing and unproven treatments. You mean like, what was it yesterday? Having soup. Having soup, Chris Cuomo? That was the treatment that Chris Cuomo received, yes. Mm -hmm. Soup. Okay, so when Fauci told everybody not to wear a mask, then flip-flopped and said wear masks, or was it when Fauci said that he was wearing a mask after being vaccinated purely for the imaging and not due to any science, or was it when we shut the entire world down using faulty virus spread modeling just to justify shutting the entire global economy? To the vast majority... Misinformation, that misinformation has come to us from the government and the government experts. The very same people HHS is telling us now we should only get our information from. America, you, this is, like, it's like two o'clock in the morning. Hey, we're closing up. Come on, you winos. Come on, get out. I don't know. There seems to be a problem here. Is it really two o'clock? Yeah, you're a wino. Come on, get out. Misinformation can sometimes spread intentionally to serve a malicious purpose, such as to trick people into believing something for financial gain or political advantage. This is usually called disinformation. Yeah, yeah, kind of sounds up. It kind of sounds up to exactly how most people in America feel when we're getting our information from the experts and the government. First hint in this new document from the Surgeon General and HHS shows who they're really coming after. In recent years, the rapidly changing information environment had made it easier for misinformation to spread at an unprecedented speed and scale, especially on social media and online retail sites, as well as search engines. Okay, here's what they've talked about that they've done so far, okay? Um, During the COVID pandemic, uh, there have been significant efforts to address health information, misinformation. And here are just a few examples from the United States government. Trusted community members, such as health professionals, faith leaders, and educators have spoken directly to their communities to address COVID-19 related questions in town halls, community meetings, via social and traditional media. Now, remember, these politicians, these trusted voices, these, these faith leaders and educators... Oh, educators? Oh, I trust the education unions, don't you? These educators and trusted voices, they're the ones that have been asked by HHS. Boy, who did this before? Oh, he was Woodrow Wilson in the Minutemen. Researchers have identified leading sources of COVID-19 misinformation, including misinformation super spreaders. I think that's us. (laughs) Oh my gosh, they do love us. They love us. They really love us. There are misinformation super spreaders, media organizations that have devoted more resources to identify and debunk misinformation about COVID-19. Now, I would say that's us, but they wouldn't say that was us. Some technology platforms have improved efforts to monitor and address misinformation by reducing the distribution of false or misleading posts and directing users to health information from credible sources. Governments have increased their efforts to disseminate clear public health information in partnership with trusted members, uh, uh, messengers. Oh, that is great. So now they have verified in this document that the government is enlisting these trusted members of society. Don't worry, boy wonder. I think the penguin knows exactly what he's doing. Here's where they introduce what needs to happen going forward. They need to equip Americans with the tools to identify misinformation, to make informed choices about the information that they share 
the address uh, to address health misinformation in their communities and partner with them and other trusted leaders. So please, let's all come together. Let's work for the government. Do you hear what is happening to your country today? Let's get into partnership with our local leaders who are so very trusted. Expand research that deepens our understanding of health misinformation, including how it spreads and evolves, how and why it impacts people. Who's the most susceptible? Which strategies are the most effective in addressing it? Then implement product design and policy changes on technology platforms to slow the spread of misinformation. Implement product design and policy changes on technology platforms to slow the spread of misinformation. By the way, I was just thinking about Cuba a minute ago and uh, Venezuela and Hugo Chavez, because Venezuela is probably in Cuba right now. They're probably helping beat the people in Cuba into submission. But when Hugo Chavez Chavez was alive. You know, one of the first things he did, he said, we're never going to be able to take over this government. We're never going to be able to turn it into a communist crap hole. We're never going to be able to abuse our own people and have them starving just to the point to where they're eating animals out of the zoo. We're never going to be able to do that unless we can take over the media and silence people who has a voice of dissent. If we can just silence them, then we can have them eat all the animals in the zoo. Won't that be fun? Of course, we're going to have to do something else, too. We're going to need to get control of the Pentagon, or yeah, I'm sorry, the, uh, we're gonna, the military, and we'll have to have control of the local police, too. Hmm. And there have to be a lot of chaos in the street. Anyway, I, I'm sorry, I keep... I keep going off to Cuba because Cuba is on my mind today for some reason, but totally unrelated to what we're seeing here with HHS. Um, they also want to invest in longer term efforts to build resilience against health misinformation, such as media, science, digital data, health literacy programs. <laughs> I wonder if they could build camps for us, like an education camp, and we could all go to camp in the summer and the fall and the winter and the spring and the summer and the fall and spring and the winter. It'd be great. We could learn so much from our government. So anyway, they want to invest in longer term efforts. The government wants to invest in longer term efforts to build resilience against health misinformation, such as media, science, digital data, health literacy programs, and training for health practitioners, journalists, librarians, and others. Boy, I got to tell you, you better get a hold of them damn librarians because they are out there right now spreading misinformation like there is no tomorrow. And guess what, America? There may not be a tomorrow.